that's Cornerstone, and that's the difference. Our next guest was paralyzed at age 21 after a tragic injury. About to begin the prime of his life, he was faced with whether or not he would even have a quality of life at all. He's authored the book, Still Walking, and is here to tell us his inspirational story. Rob Oliver, welcome to Real Life. Yay! We're so glad you're here. Thank you very much. I'm glad yeah. to be here. We're so glad you're here. And could you just, just let's start off by just telling us about what happened. You were not born with an injury. You, it happened to you at age 21, right? Uh, right. Of course, at 21, I was one of those active, athletic kind of guys. I wasn't really into organized sports, but I was doing all the fun stuff that's out there. I was riding bikes, playing games, doing everything. A little bit of extreme stuff. So I was body surfing on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Mm. And really the only way I can describe it is it, body surfing. You're familiar with body surfing. I it's, am, I am. Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. it's surfing without a surfboard. Your body right. is the board. So right, okay. right. as I was riding the wave in towards the shore, instead of it carrying me forward, it actually pushed me down. I hit my head on the bottom mm -hmm. and I felt something pop and I heard a crunch and then everything went cold. Mm. And really, I couldn't move at that point. You couldn't move and you were in the water. Yes. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's really a scary thing. Oh, oh I, I think that would be I, terrible. I love the water, but I can't imagine being in an accident. And yes. How did you get out? So, well, really, that's one of the things. As I lay in the water, I couldn't move at all. And the water rolled me around. And it was a matter of hold my breath, hope, and pray. And I tell you, there is nothing as comforting in the whole world as knowing that you're right with God. Mm. To know that whatever this circumstance is, however it happens, if I don't make it out of here, I know where I'm going and I know that wow. I, I've got that settled. Thankfully, I was there with a number of my friends and when one of my friends saw me, my face cleared the water for a second. He saw I didn't stand up and so he came in after me. Uh, a little bit embarrassed to admit this, the bathing suit that I was wearing was one of those colorfully uh, it was a very colorful oh, bathing suit. Like the fluorescent suit. kind of back then? Yeah, it was, it was in the early 90s and it was yes, acceptable. Sure. Uh, my kids are always embarrassed when I talk about it, but it <laughs> saved my life because when my friend was it's looking sparkled. for me. That's yeah, right. He was, yeah. That was what he was attracted to was the color. So he came in, pulled me out and saved my life. Wow. I say thank God for the bathing suit. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then you found out that it's, you broke your neck. Is that what happened? Correct. Mm -hmm. I broke my neck. At, uh, the C5-6 level. Oh, wow. C5, well, that doesn't mean anything to me, but that's... It's not a good thing. Right. No, it, yeah. it's in the cervical region, which means that um, I don't have any use of anything from my chest down. I've got limited use of my arms and hands, enough to be able to take care of myself somewhat. Uh, I do drive and am able to get around, work full time, all amazing. that kind of thing. Isn't that amazing? So you've got, you went through a lot of, you were in the hospital for a number of months and then you went to a rehab center and then from there, and we need to put in here about the fact you had a girlfriend during this time too. So right. um, what about that? Uh, my girlfriend at the time was actually on the beach and saw me injured and really I wanted to make sure that she and I were okay. So mm -hmm. the first three days I was on a ventilator. I couldn't talk to anybody. I, one of the things that's in the book is about how difficult it was to communicate during that time. But when I could finally talk, I said, listen, you and I need to talk and it's about us. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know what the future holds. It looks like it holds a lot of limitations. It looks like there's going to be some significant um, obstacles to overcome in the future. But if that's, if that's overwhelming for you, I need you to be okay, and if you need to leave, I'm okay with that. Mm. And I said, I don't know what you're feeling towards me, but if you're just feeling sorry for me, if you're feeling pity towards me, that's not the foundation for a lifelong relationship. Mm. And the other thing I said is, I don't know what kind of pressure you're under from other people. And they would say, you can't leave him now in this hour of great need. And those people aren't a part of us. This is about you, and it's about me. And right now, I, what I was telling her was, this is about you. I want you to be okay. And so whatever you need to do, if you need to, to leave, I'm okay with that. And she got real mad and with big tears in her eyes, she said, listen, what I love about you has nothing to do with whether or not you can walk. I love you for who you are on the inside. And if you think you can get rid of me that easy, you've got another thing coming. Wow. Oh, well, 
immensely. So this girlfriend then became your wife. Absolutely. <laughs> when you find somebody that loves you for who you are, yeah. of course you marry them and she is mm -hmm. the most beautiful creature God ever created. But with apologies to you too, you come in. <laughs> But the fact is that what she taught me, that very first conversation that we had is this. Just because I have limitations and just because there are physical things that I may or may not be able mm -hmm. to do, it doesn't change the fact that it's about what's going on in here. Mm -hmm. It's about character and it's about personality. It's about heart. It's about who you are on the inside. And so even though I may have a quirky sense of humor and I've got my own little idiosyncrasies, mm -hmm. it's really about finding someone in life who appreciates you for who you are and forming a lifelong relationship with them. Well, I just want to ask you, um, were you tempted during this shocking thing that was unpleasant that happened to you, did you feel like having a pity party? I will tell you this, for the most part, I really appreciate what God has given to me. And uh, there are times, uh, probably once or twice a year that I crash. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is really hard. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. There are problems and this is, you're dealing with the same thing every single day. And you know that tomorrow when you wake up, you've got the same thing going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, then my wife, uh, God bless her, she reminds me how wonderful it is that I have a wonderful wife and I've got wonderful kids. <laughs> but oh, you have three. I've That's got right. three of them, yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I'll have to tell you about them in a minute. But the fact is this that it's about getting refocused mm -hmm. on what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so to take and understand that the Lord has truly blessed me and he has given, he's given me life. Mm -hmm. And with the frailty that I understand that we have in life, we've got no guarantees about it. And Absolutely. so what I've come to understand is every single day is a gift. And really that's not just limited to being wheelchair bound. Can you just, your message goes beyond that. Really, it is. Mm -hmm. The fact is, everybody has problems. Everybody mm -hmm. has limitations. Part of being human means that we can't do everything. That's, well, we like That's, to think we can, but we can't. We can, yeah. Exactly. Well, we can do everything through Christ who gives us strength. Right. But the fact is that we have the abilities that God has given us. And what happens so often is Satan would have us focus on what we can't do. Mm -hmm. And that gets us down and we become, we become for lack of a better term, paralyzed. Well, mm -hmm. he's a liar. Mm -hmm. Right, but he wants our focus to be off. Right. That's right. That's and so right. when we take and we, the abilities that God has given us, the mm -hmm. tools that God has given us, and we can use those to live our lives, to enjoy what we have, and really to bring honor and glory to him and to his son, that's what life's about. And we, we all work together. So sometimes it's, it's like we were talking about, sometimes maybe it's hard to ask for help and, and uh, you know, and, but we need each other to help us out. It is. I can't, obviously I've got, with my limitations, I need help. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to have people help me do things. And it's a fine line to work between, am I stubborn and going to do this on my own? or am I gonna to have to ask for help? And then also making sure that when I'm asking for help, do, am I asking kindly, but am I also being appreciative of what others are doing for mm -hmm. me? Well, you know, you're such an inspiration too. And um, this book I think was awesome in that it just shares and details your journey and it, um, it, it, it motivates all of us to see that God has a plan for us and not to be paralyzed like you were saying. I know that we can um, get your book if they come, if they email what, at um, ctvn.org. Your book is available through that as well. And his um, story talks about his children. He doesn't only have three children, he has triplets, isn't it? You know, it it's funny <laughs> how different people look at things and I, I tell people I have triplets and they say, oh, God bless you. And my take on it is he has. We were having trouble having kids and yet we were blessed to have three at one time and obviously I wouldn't trade any of them okay. for the world. No, I, you have a boy and two girls. I've right? got a boy and two girls That's when they right. were not being born I said to the doc like hey he's outnumbered can you at least give him seniority and <laughs> I, the doc said like hey how they come out is how they come out but yeah he's uh, he's the oldest he's the oldest oh, by a full minute. Oh, so, cool. yeah. I, I want to know because I know people are wondering you have a family obviously your wife is home She's taking care of the kids and helps take care of you. How do you have the living? Um, I worked for the Disability Rights Network of Pennsylvania 
and I'm doing advocacy work to protect the rights of people with disabilities to make sure that they are receiving the services that they deserve. Wow. And yeah, that's amazing. That's, and you also are a, a motivational speaker, Absolutely. so we can you can be called and and asked to come and speak and encourage all of us. Too. I would love to. That'd be um, a wonderful thing. Well, I we appreciate you coming. Thank you so much. It was just a delight to meet you and and to and to be encouraged and inspired that there is no boundaries at all. You know, regardless of what of what life brings. Your, your quote is, I am still walking. I think that's really great. Whatever the journey is, that you're still walking. So that's great. Thank you very much. It's been a real privilege to be here. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, we're going to go ahead and in a ju just a moment, we'll be praying for your needs. But first, let's see what's on tomorrow's Real Life.